I just finished reading Dead House Gates, book two of Malazan, Book of the Fallen, and I need to talk about it. But first, thank you for tuning into this video. My name's Dylan. I'm your spaced out wizard host. I like to think I'm a wizard, but I normally space out whilst reading. But over the weekend, whilst I was on holiday, I could not afford to space out because I finished off reading Gardens of the Moon and I read the entirety of Dead House Gates, books one and two of Malazan, Book of the Fallen. I'm here to tell you my thoughts without spoiling anything for you. Then at the end of this video, I have a few spoiled questions for people that have read the series to help me out and to better understand the series. So Dead House Gates, set in a different continent to Gardens of the Moon and set one year after book one. A lot of the discussion on the internet is by the end of Gardens of the Moon, you finally got a grasp of the series and then Ericsson throws you an entire different continent, an entire different story, and you've got no idea. I don't really like that description. Yes, we're in a different continent with a different story, but we're just following the Malazan Empire. We're just following an empire while well, it's at a pivotal point. In book one, we're watching the Malazan Empire try to take over a continent, and there's and we're focused on one city that the Malazans are trying to take over. And in book two, we're on another continent, one that's already been conquered by the Malazan Empire, and is now having to deal with rebellions. The people of this land are now in a position to take things back and the Malazans are now on the back foot. So it's not as complicated as people are selling it to be. For me, the complications arose with the magic systems. There's a lot going on there and there's a lot of people trying to ascend or there's have ascended or things around ascendance that confuses me. And that's just where people are on the path to becoming gods. So that's where I get tricked. So that's the bit that messes me around and where I have the most confusion and need to pay more attention to. Because I do listen to things on audiobooks and like to do things quickly, I just didn't pay enough attention to the characters that had the Ascendant stories just because they didn't interest me as much. So I would space out more often whilst listening to both those parts. My favourite characters to follow were the ones with very little magic. We had Daika, who's a historian, who, was a pre who previously was a soldier, who is now following a very cool general as he is trying to look after a bunch of refugees as they're fleeing across the continent. That was my favorite part of the story. That was a six out of five, like absolute brilliance, the entirety of Dyker's story. And yes, that pronunciation is wrong. I believe Stephen Erickson says it's Duker, but it's D-U-I-C-K-E-R and that will forever be Dyker in my brain. <laughs> I'm sorry. Then one of the other storylines that I really liked most of was a guy called Cal Arms. And he is an assassin and he's just on an assassination quest throughout the story, which was very interesting for the most part. With Malazan, one of the confusing things for a lot of people is there's no one main storyline. We're not following Aragon as he's going from his farm boy to his hero journey. We're not following Kaladin as his ascension to being Kaladin Stormblessed and becoming a Knight's Radiant. We're not following Elric as he becomes an absolute badass. We're following a lot of different people across the Malazan Empire and on the other side of the conflict with the Malazan Empire as they're just living their lives. So we've got a lot of different stories going on in the one book. But Daika, who's following a refugee train, the chain of dogs, across the continent as they're trying to get to safety. And he's probably my one of my favourite non-POV characters in fantasy. Just really great general. He was... You know, his people were taken over by the Empire, but now he fights for the Empire. So it's very interesting dynamics there. We've got one lady who was a noble who at the start of this book becomes a slave. And we see her journey as she tries to get out of being a slave and gets wound up into much bigger things. And then before, as I said before, we have Kalam's journey as he's on the assassination quest. So we get a lot of interesting storylines going on. The writing style is very heavy handed. Erickson likes his prose and his descriptions, which is exactly what I love. It just really just throws you into the fantasy world and just brings things alive. And speaking of the world building, it's massive. There's so many different elements of the magic. There's so many different cultures and peoples. It's very well done. World building and writing. The plot is just a lot. But I do have the belief that Erickson ties it all in as each book goes so I think the plot's really good as well so plot writing style and then the characters excellent I really like how Erickson does his characters they each feel like they're their own person they've got their own unique voice and you get a good feel for them very quickly so if you haven't read Malazan yet but you are looking into it you are someone that likes epic fantasy you like dark stories you like prose and world building and good characters and fleshed out world this is definitely something you need to check out and I don't think you need to be scared of Malazan. I was intimidated to put it off for a long time. But if you start reading the series, if you go onto Reddit 
and search Gardens of the Moon Guy. If you follow the 10 Very Big Books podcast, these guys lay out everything that happens in each chapter and all the important events that you can take note of. So you don't have to be scared of the series and you can read it. If you're good at paying attention, you don't even need help. You, you, you'll understand enough to get all out of the series. You don't need to understand everything. That's completely all right. But if you are overwhelmed, just check out the guides on Reddit, check out a podcast, and it'll make the reading experience so much fun. It's really enjoyable to just read a few chapters of a book and go listen to other people talk about it. I think that's why we're all on BookTube trying to discuss these books. So definitely check it out. Now, if you haven't read the book, you might want to pop off. This will just be my spoiled questions that I have for the Malazan fan base to help me out. And just a few of the thoughts I had reading the book. So firstly, Everything Dyker was incredible. The death of Coltane at the end was absolutely crushing. I hate Malik Rell with a passion. I'm very excited that Dyker didn't actually die. From what I believe, two people came along and grabbed him and his little thing to bring him back. So I'm hoping that was Dyker and that they're bringing him back to life because I'd miss him if he was actually dead, but that's all right. I was a little disappointed with the anticlimactic ending for Kalam, but I'm also very excited to return to Dujek One Arm and the Bridge Burners and see what's going on there how they're going to still work with Lucene to conquer the rest of Jabakis. Oh, I believe that's what's happening. Again, I could be wrong. Please comment down below. Um, again, this channel is called Spaced Out Wizard because I space out quite a lot. I read to work on my attention span, which means I don't take in everything that I'm reading when I read these books. So if I do say anything wrong, comment down below, let me know. But yeah, I'm very excited to see what the Bridge Boys get up to in the next book. They are... Like, they, they're one of my favorite elements of the series so far, and I'm very excited to see how they work with Lacine to continue growing the Empire. It sounds like they're still working together, or I've just misinterpreted something very poorly. I, again, um, I don't, I didn't fully grasp the importance of Mapo and Incarium's story. Um, I get very confused with the Ascendants and what's going on there. So, again, with Kelenved and Dancer, like, and who they are, like, they're like Shadow Throne now. I'm, bit lost there but at the moment am i supposed to know if kellen ved and dancer let lacine know that they're going to be leaving the empire so she could take over into their spot and do they still have contact between them but yeah as a whole i'm super excited to get into memories of ice anything to do with ascendants i'm confused by a lot of the things i love a lot of the low magic peoples are my favorites and easiest to connect to like felice and i just got a bit lost with at the end but as a whole super excited and I can't wait to read Memories of Ice.